Hey everybody, it's Dom from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals and welcome back to the channel. Have you ever seen a food picture and it made you hungry? Now that is effective photography. So with that in mind, in today's video, I thought it would be cool to take some food pictures using well-known techniques from the food photography world. I'm going to talk about the obvious stuff first and then we're going to make our way to the more nuanced tips, but I have a feeling it's going to be those tips that we talk about later that are going to take average food photography and bring it up to that magazine quality level. Now I should say that I am not an expert food shooter by any means and this is also going to be a learning process for me so I think the best jumping off point is just to start shooting some food. So let's do it. Okay first tip shoot by the window. Food photography is almost exclusively done by window light or at least an artificial light that is made to look like window light. Having a large soft source wrap around the food that you're shooting from one side to the other is basically like an equation to good looking food shots. And if you've ever seen professional food photography, you'll notice this everywhere. For these first two shoots, I didn't use any added lights. I just modified the given light that was coming into the room. Having a few flags handy can be really helpful for this, but there are a lot of household objects that will work just the same. One way you might want to use a flag is to create a nice gradient that wipes across your subject and helps direct the eye towards the food that you're shooting. You can also use a flag to add negative fill if you want a steeper, more dramatic fall off on the food. However, for the sushi shoot, I did shoot a Felix light through some diffusion to achieve the same look and then another LED panel to fill in a little bit, but same idea, a large soft source directly from the side. Tip number two shoot from overhead. Now this is another technique that again you will find is used almost universally in food photos. Now that's not to say that you can't use any other angle but I think you'll find that the most flattering way to shoot most food is from directly above. Alternatively a 45 degree angle can also look nice or personally I'm a fan of level shots from across the tabletop. If you're using this technique you'll want to grab a step stool or something to stand on because to shoot top down you're going to want to get above the food you're shooting. Now for a lens choice you're not going to want to go any wider than a 35 millimeter and for aperture you're going to want to stay in the f4 to f8 range just to keep everything in a nice crisp focus. Also being in the f8 area is going to help you a lot if you are going for that 45 degree angle shot. Today I'm going to be using the EOS R with a 50 millimeter RF prime. So with an overhead shot that's lit by window light you're already most of the way there for great looking food photography but there are still a couple of things you can do that'll really drive it home. So let's talk about those. Tip number three, experiment with tabletops. Now the surface that you choose to place your food on is going to have a big effect on the final image. So if you can, try to experiment with different surfaces and tabletops to place the food on. For the charcuterie board, I started out on some white granite and then realized that placing it on wood fit the theme so much better. For these pastry shots, I really wanted the color to pop so I place them on a black plate on a black table so your eye is completely drawn to the pastries and nothing else. Tip number four, dress the set. You'll notice in professional food photography, it's very common for the photographer to dress the frame with objects that match the theme of the food that they're shooting. Doing this has the effect of placing your subject in a real life place, adding a layer of authenticity to the photo. In other words, it doesn't look like a photo shoot. It looks like you were taking pictures in the middle of someone preparing food. And some food photographer out there just went, yes, because a lot of the time, that is exactly what you're going for. You can dress the set with spare ingredients, utensils, or really anything you think that will help bring the theme together. Now with that being said, this is a technique that grounds the photo in reality, which might not be what you're going for. For example, with the pastry shoot, I couldn't think of anything I wanted to dress the set with because the cleanliness of the image I was working with fit perfectly for a minimal modern look. Okay, here's my fifth and final tip interaction. Try to incorporate an interactive element into your food photography. This is a tip that's also psychological in nature. We respond to seeing people in photographs. We also respond to seeing food in photographs. So when you combine those two things, you have a pretty powerful picture. I'll put it this way. If you see someone interacting with food in a picture, you are going to want to interact with food in real life. 
by eating it. I would bet that if you were hungry and you saw this picture, a little part of you would want to reach through that picture and try to grab some for yourself. Unless, of course, you don't like sushi. This is going to be a technique you want to try towards the end of the shoot because interacting with the food does pose the risk of damaging it or ruining its placement. So, if you're able to incorporate all of these tips into your food photography, you are already well on your way to creating professional looking content that could pass in a food magazine. And if there are any food shooters out there who are watching this and are like, why didn't he talk about that? Please drop a comment in the comment section because as I said before, I am also learning this and I would love to hear some advice from someone who's been doing this professionally. So in the description below, I added the links to the websites of the food photographers whose works I referenced in this video, and you should really check them out because they are immensely talented. So with that, this video is pretty much wrapped up. So if you liked it, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more weekly content. But I do have one last tip for you. Don't let that food you were shooting go to waste. We'll see you in the next one.